This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so today's agenda is to learn deep about partitions and file system. Okay, so why we need a partitions? Because in any hardware, it will come as a single piece. Right? So single piece in the sense, it is a uh, whatever size you order. For example, imagine a big watermelon, right? So you cannot eat the watermelon as a whole. So you divide the watermelon by cutting it into small pieces so that you can eat it nicely. So similar manner, we will not use the volume. Suppose you have installed one terabyte or 1000 GB hard disk in your operating system, whether it is Windows or Linux. It is, it doesn't matter. Okay, it does not matter. For example, let me go here and let me go to this PC. As you can see, I have installed one TB hard disk, but I'm not using as a one TB as a whole. I have divided it into three partitions. One partition is for C and the another partition as a D and the another is E. Because why I am not you know, utilizing as a single disk because if something tampers it to the C drive where your operating system main files have are installed, then it may corrupt the operating system. You are getting the point. So similarly, even irrespective of what flavor of operating system you are using, you need to divide it into th logical partitions. Physically, it can be anything, but you have to divide logically into partitions. So last week, we did the same thing. So F disk is an utility. Okay, F disk is an utility where you can divide the disk into partitions okay that is the one concept so coming back to here it means to divide a single hard drive into many logical drives okay so why we have partitions because to encapsulate your data meaning if you are downloading uh, anything into your c drive for example i am not uh you know dividing into three uh, partitions i am maintaining everything in c there is only one drive c drive suppose you by mistake you download some virus or you downloaded some trojan or some uh, malware then it will corrupt the entire operating system which will make your operating system unstable to use you're getting the point it will become unstable to used by any of the operating i mean any of the application or any of the users you may even not able to log in so similarly even linux also there is the same phenomenon but only difference is here we will divide everything using the command okay so please note this points and try to practice this diagram okay so MBR stands for master boot record. It stands for master boot record. Okay. It means it this table or this block contains the information about your logical partitions. I mean what how many partitions you have and how many are there and how many free space. So this MBR contains the that information. Okay. And we have two to three types of partitions mainly two that is primary partition and the extended partitions and the third one which is very popular is a logical partitions and which we are going to do a hands-on today about lvm that is logical volume management okay so before we go further let us study what we mean by primary partition what do we mean by extended partition what we mean by logical partition okay so let us go step by step so primary partition if you do it is nothing but a, you know dividing the disk into standard format either one two three but remember if you go with the 
primary partition as shown in the diagram you can have only four maximum okay see i told no mbr is a master boot record it it contains the initial program loader and partition table information this is what i was trying to convey to you okay see here now every disk has can have only three primary partitions so what do you mean by primary partition primary partition means it is a partition which holds the operating system okay and only one among the three primary partitions can be active which will be booted by mbr you are getting you are getting it so primary partition means is that main partition which gets booted either one okay only one among the three primary partition will get booted okay now what is extended partitions extended partition meaning it is a again a type of logical partitions which you can again subdivide for example go back to the diagram here so here extended partition again in that extended partition you have divided you can divide again here so one extended partition and you can divide here you're getting the point okay and there can be only one extended partition for disk clear and we have noticed and logical partitions which are created under the extended partition see why we have done like this because now come back to this uh, windows operating system okay now in some of the operating system there might be a constraint that you can divide a single hard drive into only four partitions you are getting it but your use case may require more than four you may require 10 partitions you may require 20 partitions but isn't it but what is the restriction says there can be only four partitions so that is why in any hard disk for that matter they divide it into four primary partitions if you do then that's it you cannot have again further partitions so that is why they brought with the concept of extended partition with the extended partition again you can subdivide that extended partition but of course we are not making use of that extended partition and anything now we are only the popular you know uh, file system management is is the logical volume management you're getting the point okay see here now please remember whenever we attach the disk it will be of the three forms dev hda it stands for the it is from ide okay that is the scsi disk second type is the scsi disk if you try to log into your machine you will come to know see i will tell you so root and red hat and i will do lsblk so as you can see here so it is sda sdb that means the disk it is considering as a SCSI disk. IDE is again by the by another IDE means it is another type of disk. That's it. Nothing else. No fancy. It is just a naming convention. You're getting the point. And virtual means it is a virtual drive. Means it is not a physic physical disk. Meaning, you are getting it. Yes, getting the point. yes, sir. Clear? Yes or not? 
Yes, sir. Yes, yes, clear. But the most popular is logical volume manage, manage, management. Okay. Now, so this is just a dividing into some partition, but you need a file system, right? That's what I told you. So now forget about ext2, ext3, and e okay. So now the most popular is ext4. This is the latest. These are old one actually. Okay, so don't worry about ext2 and ext3. So only focus on ext4. Okay, so ext4 is the popular file system. Like we have NTFS in Windows, right? So similarly, ext means extended file system. You're getting it. So extended, see? stands for for extended file system so this is the meaning of extended file system see the maximum file size can be 16 gb to 16 tb and you can have up to one air exabyte it is very very big okay and you can convert ext2 to ext4 or ext3 to ext4 okay now, any procedure for that matter in any operating system pertaining to Linux, first you have to create a partition or else you have to create a logical volume and then you have to mount it. Okay. But for now, understand that what are the basic criteria. Whenever you add a disk, suppose we added this that day. What I did first, you create a partition. Then for that partition, you create a file system and after the file system you have to mount mounting in the sense it is similar to this criteria for example it has to be displayed right so you can right click here and you can make it offline so that is the meaning of mounting okay so let me show you here if you go to disk management services See, similarly, this is also a disk management service. This is respect to Windows. See, we have all created partition. This is one big disk. Okay, so you can add multiple disk here. Okay, if I right click and if I delete the volume, okay, or if I make it uh, offline, then it will not be visible. You're getting the point. So you can open this from from there itself but not required okay so you can go to the options and you can clean up the disk and everything and you can select the disk and see here what you can do refresh you can delete you can go to the properties and you can change and you can select action okay view the disk and you, you can go to the settings see primary partition every operating system has a extended partition and these concepts okay so mounting means to make the file system available to use because now this is uh, mounted as a go to the properties and you will see this is having a file system ntfs only then it is you know made usable you're getting the point yes or no I mean, if you go to show more options and you can similarly uh, more example i can give it as suppose you mount some usb drive so as soon as you eject it so it will be getting displayed here so what you can do if you right click and you can eject isn't it so similarly mounting also it's a same criteria okay so we need to focus on this okay and there is a lab work also today you have to do this lab work okay that day i have already shown this demonstration so you have to do this lab work okay the last last week only i have taken this see so create a new disk okay and mounting the file system this entirely i have 
so i also discussed about temporary mounting and permanent mounting right so i also discussed about uh, temporary and permanent mounting so this also i have covered right so these are just the notes and we also discuss how to mount using the uuid okay so there is a proper explanation given given here just go through this okay now yes now this is uh, something else okay so now we'll go further okay so after mounting you can check okay so sometimes you may get so whenever now today i'll i'm going to teach about mounting and unmounting okay so let me log in uh, to the machine okay let me exit from here first this is my another ec2 instance and i'm going to ssh root at the rate rian sorry rish nitun rishan dot rian correct this is my why this is not working host name mithun rishan rodriya correct uh, if config whether ip has changed i think ip has changed that is the reason earlier it was 101 yes so that is the reason so how to do that so ip has changed i will prove it to you so how uh, open the notepad save it and open a fresh notepad click on run as administrator and open click on open go to c and windows there will be system 32 file rakshit nageshwari tell me what is the next System 32. Drivers. Yeah, drivers and there will be ETC and Windows. select all and click on this host. So, as you can see, what is the host? 101. I need to change it to 106 because I have restarted my <coughs> laptop. So, that's the reason <laughs> the IP has changed. So, now I am changing it to 106. And now, see, so this is the logic you have to do. What is this? Permission denied. Yeah. Clear? Now, LSBLK, now we have how many disks? One disk, two disk. Okay. And this is, can anyone tell me from where it is coming? SR0. So this is the our ISO image. Please note this point. SR0 means it is the ISO uh, image. Okay. So from but as you can notice, it is just reflecting here, but it is not mounting anywhere. Of course, we are going to mount it, but not today. But when we are taking up M. That is yellow dog updater modified to install the packages anything we are going to make use of this but not today okay so we are going to continue on unmounting the file system so as you can see if you have to unmount u mount is the command and the directory name and it will get unmounted and what is the command to mount just remove u mount so as you can see dffnh you have unmounted now if i as you can see it is clearly unmounted now this is a real time issue sometimes what will happen 
some user will already be logged in okay so for example some other users have logged in okay say one more uh, admin i have logged in say from putty so let me open putty and uh, ssh uh, Mm, we can Rishan dot Riyan and root at the rate and enter and accept the connection and just type the password. Yes, I have logged in and I am inside the this directory. Okay, some uh, someone is some other admin have logged in. Now let now see the logic okay okay i have not yet mounted just a second first let me mount so mount mount an app and now another admin goes inside the directory yeah so cd mount app now i will try to unmount i'll just add you here now see here what i'm getting the error so these are the real time issue so somebody will be working and because you don't know who is then you will check the command oh some other users have logged in so he is also done doing the same thing so how will you check so this is one command like w means who are the users there is another command to check this right okay so now how to check that so there is a command to check it which process sometimes user will be logged in but sometimes the application will be using that mount point so now how to check that f user and hyphen cu so as you can see this is giving the application application id oh this means you will come to know who is using the mount point and or which application so we will convey to the application team that this application is using this mount point and can i kill this process or you can ask the application team to either exit from that mount point and you can do it or if you kill that also it will be that user will be come out of the so as you can see he got exited see now there is no mount point if you if you kill means it will stop that process now you can now you can easily unmount the application i'm sorry unmount the directory is this clear so same thing they have mentioned here so same thing they have mentioned here okay f is or ck something you can use it similar fashion okay and if you want you can label okay there is a command to e to label so you can give some name to the partition so like e to label kt disk so similarly you can give that okay clear so but any directory you create right you have to mention in the slash etc fs tab if you want it to be permanent okay clear i will take about swap file system a little later not today let us more focus on logical volume management today okay yes Yeah. Okay.
ओके जस्ट सेकेंड yeah so we will focus on logical volume management so today's topic is logical volume management so this is the most popular volume management even now used even though in even ec2 instances in cloud technology also we are using this logical volume management okay so logical volume management is a special technology or a special technique where you can first create the logical groups of the physical disk you have attached okay then for the disk you will first add, in order to add it into the logical volumes you need to create first physical volumes okay so first you need to convert the raw disk into physical volumes and then that physical volumes you have to add it to a logical volume group and from that volume group it you can create as many physical volumes okay so in order to explain more about this so let me open a diagram here so that you can easily understand so it right here <coughs> so think that these are the disk okay so you have one disk you have two disk you have three disk okay so think that each are of 100 100 gb this is just an example 100 100 gb so these are all physical disk or the same disk we have added from the oracle virtual box okay so these are raw disk first you need to convert it into physical disk same thing so i will first convert into physical volumes so convert into physical volumes so i will write here convert to physical volume okay convert to physical volume convert to physical volume this is the phenomena okay then next what you will do so you need to add all this how many disk you want into a a big pool of volume so that is called as a physical volume so let me draw it as very big so this is a logical volume logical volume so logical volume so how you you know create a logical volume by adding this so you will add all this physical volume to this logical volume now this logical will volume will be of size how many 300 gb so that is the one of the advantage of using the logical volume management because now you can add one more disk see here you can add one more disk again you can convert it into one more sorry again you can convert this into and again you can add it now it this time it will become 400 gb so let me change here so that is the power of logic you know lvm of course you need to convert it to pv that is the first criteria okay 
so you can add like this n number of disk then you may ask me why we are adding the you know small small disk and converting it to the pv and then we are adding it to the big pool now this is where the actual process will start from this again you can create small small partitions known as physical volume of any size like you can create for 100 mb or 1 gb 1 gb like this okay similarly you can create you can creep on create and this will behave as a you know independent disk these will behave as a independent disk you're getting the point hmm? why this is going there okay so this this need not be each 1 gb you can you can create 1 gb 2 gb so these are known as physical volumes okay these are known as physical All these are known as physical volumes. So you can create the physical volumes only from the logical volume. You're getting the point? Yes or no? Clear or yes, not sir. clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. So, like this, what will happen now? Uh, in this example, I have created 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 GB. So, in this, 4 GB will be minus. So, 4 GB, 400 GB minus 4 GB. Now, the available size will be 396 GB. Now, another benefit is that you can add. So, it is not that you have created 1 GB. Now, you, uh, you will have to stick with 1 GB. No. If you require more volume, you can increase the size from 1 gb to 10 gb you can do that so the you can it is just like a tanker you are collecting the water into a from small small uh, sub uh, bottles to into the big tank so that whenever there is a requirement you can use that as a small small physical volumes you're getting the point just a second This conference will now be recorded. So, as I was saying, right, uh, going back to the diagram. So, you can increase from 1 GB to 10 GB or 2 GB, 3 GB. So, slowly, slowly, this uh, the, the space will be taken from by the logical volume or volume group. Okay, so this is called as volume groups. So, these are technical terms you have to be familiar with. So, volume groups. Hello, sir, system screen share agila. Screen share agila. Yes, yes. I forgot actually. So, so as you can see, the this is called volume groups. So these are the volume groups. So physical volume, volume groups, and physical volumes. Okay. Now. In the last class, I told you so how you can create a partition. So in in the last class, what we did, we just created a partition using F disk, and then we added the partition using the what F disk utility, and also we created a file system using mkfs.ext4, right? And then we mounted. But here the process will be little more lengthy. Okay. Now again, let me add one more disk to the system. So how to do that? And as I told you, you cannot add a disk when the system is in running state. So you need to shut down the system. So let us shut down by issuing the command power off. Right. So now the system will be switched off and let it hold. Now go to the settings. Go to the storage. So as you can see here, now this is not an attachment. Let me 
no, no. Okay. Come here. Yeah. So you have to come here. Controller. And you have to create add a disk. And you have to click on create a disk. And select next. Next. So you can create. You can specify the size as. Uh, okay, 2 GB and finish. Okay, so now we are adding the third disk and choose and press OK. And now I am going to again turn on the server so it will power up and let it come online. And you can switch to that mode if you want and let it come up. Okay. So let us wait for some more time. And you have to give the password. You will be logged in. What happened? Yes, so now we are logged in and if I do LSBLK, now as you can see there is a disk. Okay. So now after this, what you have to do? First, you have to create the physical volume. So what is the command? PV create slash dev slash SDC. What is the command? What is the message I'm getting? So physical volume created success successfully created. Now if you do LSBLK, you will not get much information because this is just considering as a disk. No much, nothing much. But if you want to know whatever you have created, how many physical we, volumes we have, so there is a command called as PVS. So this information will give you slash dev SVC. So which disk you have created as a physical volume? What is the size and how many free? Okay. Or you can also give PV display. So it will give you the full information like what is the UUID? How many size? So all those VG name meaning which volume group volume group it is associated to. But as of now, it is showing empty because we have not yet created any volume group and we have not associated any physical disk to it. Right? I mean, physical volume to the volume group. So, how to create a volume group? So, VG create hyphen n. Hyphen n means the new or the name. So, name I will give it as my. VG stands for my volume group or you can name it as application application dash VG. Right. So will it get created? No, you have to pass the path of this volume. So slash dev slash SDC. Okay. What is this? Okay, it's not required. Okay, so iPhone N is not required. So as you can see, so VGS, so VGS. So as you can see now, there is one volume group, app VG. Now, how many physical volume it has? One and logical volume zero. And size is almost 2 GB. Okay. Because why it always shows less because in the file system, some of the space is taken by the file system to track uh, the I mean to uh, store its information to store its metadata. So that is why it will show some value less. So VGS. Okay. And then VG. Okay, we have created and then if you do VG display. Now it will say it will give more information. Now I will run PV display again. 
so now it is saying pv name and which volume group it is associated and what is the physical volume size and blah 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 okay and what is the next step so you can always refer to the diagram so we have created this step step number one added new disk step number two converted to pv step number three added to the created volume group and added here clear and now from this i need to create the volume group i mean uh, physical volume so how to create so lv create hyphen n app lv that is application logical volume one okay and then what is the size so size for that you have to give hyphen capital l and i will specify as 100 mb the size 100 mb then which volume group so what is the volume group you created app volume group so you have to mention that so app dash bg that's it if you know this command next so now if you do lvs you will get the cr so this is the app lv volume group and the size okay now can you mount this no you cannot mount. what what is the next so if you do lv scan it will give you the complete path so this is the one so what you have to do you have to create a file system so mkfs.ext4 and you have to enter and now you create a directory mkdrr slash app1 and mount mount hyphen t that is ext4 and dash app1 so now if i do df hyphen h so as you can see this is so this is how it will be dev mapper app vg app, that is from app volume group and then lv1 app lv1 so this is the logic okay so i'm going to stop here today because if i continue this will be too much you may get confused so i'm going to pass on this command to you so history cut hyphen c 8 minus so i am going to pass this command so where is the group created where is the group yeah this one so here you can practice today practice this today okay until here you have to practice any doubt guys in this concept i am going to share this also with you let anyone with the link copy this I'm going to name it as LVM. So I'm going to stop the.